guys, I just want to show you this real quick. I get a lot of agents say, how do you get, how do you get expired listings? How do you get expired listings? How do you get their contact information? My response is always Red X. I've used everybody that's out there. The thing about Red X is they mine their own data. Expired listing data is mine data, meaning somebody has to go out there and figure out what the phone number is, right? But guys, Red X is a company. I've been using them for over 10 years. Every time I've changed to somebody else, I've always went back. They're great people to work with. They have a great tech support and they have a role play hotline. So if you're a Red X subscriber and you're looking for a role play partner, you want to build your scripts, you want to build that skill set, which is fantastic. Do the better you get on the phone, the more appointments you're going to get, the better your conversations are going to go. Subscribe to Red X. Even if you're just using them for role play, they role play with you. They have my scripts. They record the call. They critique you on it. Then they send you the recording so you can listen to it later and see how you sound on the phone. I mean, they truly care about your success with their lead sources. So, so guys, they, they, um, that's where you get expired data from. So give me just a second. So guys, and best yet, if you tell them that I sent you, they will actually uh, waive all the setup fees. So you actually save $150. So guys, I got five tips today to share with you. I got five tips to, uh, to share with you today on getting more expired listings. And my name is Jason Morris. For you guys that don't know me, I feel like most of you guys know me, but for you guys that don't know me, my name's Jason Morris. And what I do is I train real estate agents to go out and build a business, to build a listing heavy business. Guys, and the reason why we talk about getting more listings is because with more listings, you can control, you can control your time. That's number one, but you can control your income, the future of your business, you control the days you work, the days you don't work, and you can literally build your life around your business rather than the other way. A lot of us build these businesses that basically we've created a job that's seven days a week for us. I teach you how to build a business that works for you, that finances your lifestyle. So I offer group coaching. If you're interested, contact me, send me a message. Um, I will give you a great first month deal. So you can get in there and try it out. And then basically it puts all the risk on me where I am the person that has to show you value, right? A lot of these coaches want you to spend a lot of money before uh, they, they do a little more than tell you their name. I want to show you value and then gain you as a long-term coaching client. So send me a message. I'm happy to help you. I'm happy to tell you more about it. So, um, Guys, like I said, I'm a huge fan of Red X Expireds. You can go to jasonmorrisredx.com. That link, if you don't want to call them and tell them I sent you, that link will actually save you the $150 setup fee. So let's get started here. So one of the things that I see a lot of agents doing or not doing is I see a lot of agents that they take, they say they want to do expireds or they say they want to do for sale by owners or for, for really, they say they want to do they want to subscribe to Zillow, right? And Derek, I will record, I am recording this. They say they want to subscribe to Zillow or Red X or anything, right? But the problem is they don't have a plan. They just think that, hey, look, I'm subscribing. I'm sending them a hundred bucks a month or 60 bucks a month or whatever it is. Maybe they got the Red X, this, the, the super package with Vortex and they got a, a dollar and all this stuff, but they subscribe to it and they don't have a plan. So one of the things I want to do today is I'm going to share five tips with you and it's going to, these tips are going to give you some framework for a plan. Does that sound good to you guys? Give me a yes in the comments if that sounds good to you. If you're listening to this on Facebook, give me a, give me a yes. I need an expired plan in the comments. If you're listening to the recording on Facebook later on, you didn't catch it live put, yes, I need a plan. Right. So, um, so Michael, you need a plan for those 2,400 that you got in Houston. So, so the thing is, I, I made this funnel and I took it from my, um, my book to give you guys kind of an illustration. 
okay, I know we talk about funnels and everybody thinks about websites. Funnels aren't just websites, right? We got a lot of funnels. The thing we have to do is we have to keep dumping in leads in the top of our funnel. It's like pouring, pouring oil into your car in a funnel, right? Once you quit, um, once you quit pouring the oil, no more, nothing comes out of the, the end anymore. So we need to look at our expired lead business, our expired listing business, and really our listing business as a whole, as a funnel, right? Once we start dumping people in, our job is to sift through those people. Our job is to sift through the people, look for the people that are interested in doing something, right? I have a belief that most people want to sell their house because they have a problem. And uh, nobody really just goes like, hey, honey, hey, honey, it's the weekend. Why don't we pack up all our stuff in boxes and move, move across the county? See what, they got, see what they got going on three streets over. Um, but uh, nobody really does that. Typically, the reason why they're wanting to sell is because they have a reason. They have a problem. They have some issue. They have something going on. They're moving up. They're moving down. They're moving sideways, moving for a job, whatever it is. They inherited the house. They can't afford two houses. Can't afford the payment. I mean, it could be a, a list of things. Hey, I sold a house one time that was a listing. Our county had some stipulations about horses. I sold his house and helped him buy a new one because he wanted a second horse. I mean, you know, hey, I'm not judging him. I made I made some money and he got the house he wanted that he could have two horses, right? He, he had one horse and he wanted a second one. So anyway, um, so once we dump them into the funnel, we have the first conversation. That's initial conversation to make sure that they're who, who they're supposed to be, the number's right, right? Hopefully we get a really good conversation. Then those first level leads are the brand new ones. Those are the expired you got today. That's the list that you pulled from the last last 12 months. I'm a big encourager of these old expires, you know, just because they didn't sell their house in 2019, you know, January 2019, that doesn't mean they want to don't want to sell it in January 2020, right? So you have those first conversations. And then your job is the ones that are correct numbers just because they didn't answer the phone it has nothing to do with you a lot of agents get all a lot of agents get their feelings hurt because nobody answered the phone with them guys you know we're all like this guys sometimes a lot of times i don't answer the phone for one simple reason i was busy i was doing something else right i was doing something that was more important i need to finish it before i could talk to the phone I'll tell you this, I, I looked at my phone just now. I got a call from a guy. Yep, the guy's an important phone call, right? I need to call him back. He's sending me a contract. But I'm doing something right now. I can't talk to him right now. Sorry, right? Everybody's like that. Hey, they might be at work, you know? Not everybody's allowed to have their cell phone out at work, right? So we follow up with the correct numbers. We follow up with the numbers that we feel like's right. Now, I'll tell you this too, a lot of agents, and we're going to talk about this in a minute, a lot of agents get, they get, they kind of get stumped by some of these um, objections that we hear. That's, that's really a different call, but just because they tell you, hey, we don't want to work with an agent. Hey, we're not ready to work with an agent. We're not ready to list our house. We found an agent, but it's not on MLS you know, things like that, that doesn't mean they're not going to work with you. That just means they're not going to work with you today. They don't like the offer you're presenting with them. So what we have to do is the people that we have the correct numbers with, we got to follow up with those people that we have meaningful conversations with. And what I mean by meaningful conversation is these are the people that you talk to on the phone and they kind of tell you their deep, dark secrets. Hey, yeah. We, in expired cases, hey, yeah, we thought that we thought that agent was going to sell it for us. Right. We thought that agent was going to help us. He said that he could get 189 for it. And I mean, we had an offer for 185 and it just wasn't good enough. Right. Guys, there's all kind of reasons that expires expire. Right. It's not just, it's not just they were overpriced. I mean, I'll, I'll tell you guys this real quick. Just, just to give you a list. You know what? I had a listing one time that I was the fourth agent that listed it. They had a dog that was the size of a small horse. And um, basically, I realized when I pulled up to the house, I was kind of beating my head against the wall. I was going, the house is priced correctly. The pictures look great. You know, there's some kind of problem I'm just not seeing. 
I talked to the lady before the appointment. Turned out when I got there, this giant dog comes out. And I'm typically not afraid of dogs. I usually don't have a lot of problems with them. Typically, dogs like me for the most part. And um, however, this dog was so big and he was barking, I would have never let my clients out the house. And when I'm talking to her, I didn't immediately, when I, I, I call her because I didn't want to get out. I didn't want to get my leg torn off and eaten, you know? So I call her up and I'm like, hey, this is Jason Morris. I just want to give you a call. Your dog's here. I didn't know if he was friendly or not. So she comes out. And of course, dog, dog was a teddy bear. But I didn't know that at first. Turns out when I'm talking to her in the house and I start asking her what happened with other showings because I knew she was getting showings at the price she was at. She said, well, a lot of them just pull up in the yard. Then they turn around and leave. That's when it clicks, clicked for me. No kidding. No kidding. They're leaving because you have a giant dog. You have a giant dog and they're scared of the dog. I would have never let my clients get out in that situation. I've been worried about not only my safety, but their safety. Right. So, um, so, you know, that's just one other reason. I mean, but you know what, maybe they weren't available to show it. You know, I've had sellers that I've had to have the heart to heart conversation with before. Hey guys, you've turned down the last five showings in a row. You know, typically, typically 10, 12 showings, we got a contractor, there's a problem we need to figure out, right? Um, we at least had an offer with 10 to 12 showings, correct? Most markets, I guarantee that 10 to 12 showings, you typically have an offer or there's a problem with the house that maybe you're not aware of or a problem with the owners maybe you're not aware of. I've had owners that just wasn't allowing showings. So we had to have that heart to heart talk, right? Have you guys ever had anything like this? Owner just wasn't allowing people to get in. Tenant just wasn't allowing people to get in. Hey, get this one. The other agent is an asshole. Everybody, every market has those. I could name like five in my market right now, but I'm not going to because, you know, it's going out to a lot of agents. But all of us have that agent in our office. It's like, oh my God, do I have to call him to show this house? They're so difficult to deal with. Nobody wants to deal with them. We all have that agent. Sometimes the house isn't getting showings because of the agent right? So, um, you know, and sometimes, sometimes guys, I mean, I'll tell you this, sometimes you take a 90 day listing, you get a contract on it really quick. The contract goes for 60 days, 70 days. Then the contract falls through and you just run out of time. That happens sometimes too, right? So I should have made a slide with all that stuff, but I want to make sure that you guys understand there's a misconception that all expired listings are overpriced. But even with that being said, if they were overpriced three months ago, six months ago, a lot of us are in markets that are moving up and they're not overpriced now, right? We need to have a pricing strategy too for those, right? But that's, that's like I said, a different call. But long-term follow-up plan with the calls that are, you have meaningful conversations with, those long-term follow, follow-up plans need to turn into listing appointments. Okay, so listing appointments, then hopefully sign listings. So this is the framework. This is the framework for your listing business. This is pretty simple stuff, isn't it? Pretty simple stuff. So I teach all this in depth in my group coaching, by the way. Guys, the number two thing that I see that a lot of agents do or don't do is Consistency. Most agents aren't consistent at all calling these. Like we talked about, they didn't have a plan, right? Um, one of the things that when I first started training real estate agents and I started talking about my schedule, I, I'm a big believer in having a schedule, at least some rough framework for a schedule, right? And um, But when I first started talking about a schedule, it blew my mind, it blew me away because I was going, wait a second, um, nobody has a schedule right? Nobody's, well, we wouldn't miss, we wouldn't miss a listing appointment, right? None of us would miss a listing appointment. However, we will miss an appointment we've set up to call the people we're trying to get listings from. It's really an interesting thing. And guys, without consistency, right? Let's go back to this right here. If we don't keep dumping expired leads, it, dumping listing leads, dumping buyer leads, whatever kind of leads it is. If we don't start dumping those leads into our, the top of our funnel, 
sooner or later, we're not going to have anything coming out of the bottom. Just like we talked about a second ago, pour an oil through a funnel into your car. Once you quit dumping oil in, no more oil goes into your car, right? This is the same way. Once you quit dumping, once you quit dumping leads into the top of your funnel, once you quit having those first conversations, all of a sudden, you don't really have new people to follow up with. And the name of the game is the people you follow up with, right? The name of the game is the people you follow up with. I'd even go as far to say, if you had to choose, now I know this is going to be crazy for somebody, but if you had to choose prospecting in the morning or going on a listing appointment, right? You had to cancel one or the other. I would say you need to choose to cancel the listing appointment right? That's, if you had to choose between one of them, that's how important, that's how important these top level leads are and how important your follow-up is, right? I mean, that's, that's it. I can hear some of you guys um, gasping right now, going, oh my God, I can't believe he'd cancel a listing appointment. Yes, I think you should cancel the listing appointment follow-up. However, guys, if you have a schedule, sorry if you have a schedule you shouldn't you shouldn't have to worry about cancel an appointment right and guys coming up with your schedule is is pretty easy i see all these crazy formulas and all this crazy stuff coming up with schedule is easy number one figure out your family commitments Right? Figure out your family commitments. Figure out when date night is. Figure out if you're taking your kids to school, it needs to go on your schedule. I'll see some agents, guys. I'll see some agents that schedule, make a schedule with them being at the office at 8 a.m. However, they have to have the kids to school at 8.30. Well, how can you get to the office at 8 a.m.? I was talking to an agent the other day, and she's got a small child that's starting, starting school in a couple of weeks, and, and she goes, I really want to get started. I really want to get started, Jason. You know, her husband works during the day, and he's he's the main one paying the bills right now. But but she wants to contribute. She wants to contribute, and she wants you know go out there and make money herself. And um, one of the things she said, well, was my kid takes a two hour nap. I was talking to her about her day and what she had going on, and she's in my coaching program. And she was my kid takes a two hour nap. I said, what do you do during that two hours? Because she has somebody, her husband to be home in the afternoon. She can always go after five to listing appointments. Right. Um, she can always go after five to listing appointments. She's got some arrangements where she's got something she could do with the child, her child, you know, certain times, you know, you know, temporarily. She's got, you know, family member or something that can babysit for a couple hours. I said, what do you do during that two hours your child's taking a nap? She goes, oh, I take a nap too. I said, oh man, that two hours, that's your time to get ramped up, right? That two hour nap is your time to get ramped up. Some of you guys that have jobs, that hour lunch break, that hour after work, that's your time to get ramped up. That's your time to get out of the out of your job and get full time into real estate, right? Number one, we need to figure out what our family commitments are. Because like if you look around the real estate industry, we probably have the highest divorce rate out of any industry ever. And one of the reasons is is because this is a really easy business to um, work seven days a week, 20 hours a day. I'm guilty of that myself. It's a real easy business to get caught up in the action, right? And then it gets addictive, guys. But if we, if those two things collide, our business life and our family life, then typically only one of those two things are going to survive. Number two, business commitments, right? Now, business commitments, and forgive my spelling and stuff, we're just doing this real quick here because I want to get through a lot of stuff today on this call. Business commitments, if you're networking at the chamber events, they're not going to change the chamber event for you guys. This webinar today, you're doing some training, you're, you're learning, you're building you know, self-improvement stuff. We can't change the webinar because one person can't show up at 10, right? They have to watch the, you know, these business commitments that are non-negotiable, continuing education is one. Those things aren't going to change for you. You need to put those in your schedule. You know, office meetings that you got to go to, things like that, right? Number three, prospecting, right? Prospecting. Now, this is where you're doing those top-level calls, 
right? You're doing those level one calls. This is where you're dumping stuff in your funnel. I think this is one of, you know, once you get your family stuff figured out, once you get your business commitments figured out, prospecting is the important thing. Now, if you have a job and you're just doing real estate part-time and you're trying to go full-time, you probably need to put your job first. You probably need to put your job first, then your family commitments, the business commitments and prospecting. And with your job, you know, guys, sometimes going out and looking for leads, you know, you got to figure out when you can do it. 30 minutes, an hour here, an hour there, two hours on Saturday. One of the things that I, I find the most and I find the most interesting with agents is that a lot of agents um, will get settled into the job thing and they want to do real estate full time, but they're only working with buyers. Guys, if you're working, if you're working a full time job and wanting to make that change, start building your listing business. Those listings can get shown while you're at work. Guys, you guys that are struggling with buyers and showing buyers property and working, you know, working your butt off, right? If you start taking more listings, those listings can get shown while you're hanging out, while you're hanging out with your kids, while you're doing stuff with your family on Sunday. I don't like to work Sundays. I don't work Sundays hardly ever, ever, right? I don't like to work a lot of Saturdays, you know? Um, but the reason I'm able to do that is because of my schedule and the way that my schedule and stuff is set up. Now, if you take, I'll, I'll tell you this quick story with prospecting and listings. Um, me and Laura, when we first started dating and stuff, we went on a ton of cruises. We went on a bunch of cruises. We hadn't seen a lot of stuff. We hadn't seen a lot of really cool stuff. And guys, there was one cruise we went on. I made $18,000 from contracts I got while I was on the boat. I had listings steady getting shown. Well, on another one, I made $15,000, right? I made every cruise that we went on, I made more money on the cruise than the trip cost. And it was because my listings could get shown while I was on the boat, while we were out in the Caribbean, while we were hanging out on some island doing something really cool, right? But you can't do that with buyers. You can have 50 listings, all of them get shown today. You can have 50 buyers and you probably, if they're all approved, you probably can't show them all property this month. However, prospecting is one of the most important things for, I would put follow-up time in there and five, everything else, right? That's it. Everything else. A quick, easy way to make your schedule. I mean, literally you can sit down there in five minutes, make your schedule and, and guys, you know, if you got kids, you already got school schedules, right? We already know when they're going to go to school the next three months. You can go ahead and sit down and build your schedule today. When are you going to be home? When are you going to be off work? Guys, I live, when I lived by myself, after I got divorced, um, I lived by myself. I lived in a condo across the street from the ocean. I'll tell you this. I set up my schedule where I got to the office at 730 every day. I prospected until I set two appointments or I prospect until 11 a.m. I done some office stuff from 11 to 12. 12, I went and ate lunch every day. Lunch was lunch is a constant for me, guys. Um, about twelve o'clock, I want a little something to eat, right? Lunch is a constant for me. Okay, then guys, get this, get this. I tried to schedule my appointments at like one, two in the afternoon, so I could be home like three or four, so I could go hang out and do something fun that I wanted to do, right? Um, some days, and if I didn't have appointments, if I didn't have appointments scheduled for that day, I either went back to the office and prospected for a little bit more, or Guys, I went home, right? I just went home. I mean, it's such an easy schedule. Honestly, during that time period, I probably worked less than I ever worked in my life and consistently made twelve, fifteen thousand dollars $15,000 a month in real estate commissions. I know that doesn't sound like a lot to some of you guys, but it's a lot of money in Myrtle Beach, South Carolina. So, um, but we got to be consistent with it. We got to be consistent. The power is consistency. Number three. The number three tip I'm going to give you today is I think that you got to have a pre-listing package. Go ahead and raise your hand. If you're on Facebook, put, I have a pre-listing package or I don't have a pre-listing package. Go ahead and put it in the comments. I have a pre-listing package or I don't have a pre-listing package. If you're listening to this as a recording, put it in the comments. I got one or I don't have one. Guys, about 98, 99% of real estate agents, if they do have one, they don't ever send it to nobody. Alvin don't have one. Guys, Alvin don't have one. If they do have one, they don't send it to anybody. 
They think they got to keep it a secret. They got to keep it on their laptop. Um, Daryl Self's got one. Michael Dick's got one. Um, Michael Barr just said that his is updated. He has to up his outdated. He has to update it. Missy Bills just put she has one. Roseanne Sampson, which we have one. Some a lot of you guys have one because I talk about it all the time and I tell you how important it is. Guys, I have people that are calling me from two years ago. I just took a listing that I talked to the guy two years ago. He had my pre-listing package. Derek Radford's got one. Jamie Slater uh, created one yesterday for my template. Awesome, man. Awesome. Ronaldo said, I don't have a pre-listing package. Not enough business that can be impressive for the years having the business. Ronaldo, put it together. If you don't have a great resume, your office has a great resume. Guys, you don't actually need a great resume anyway because nobody else has one. So I'm going to tell you the secret here, just a second here. So I have this belief that we don't sell houses. We sell a service that sells houses. Simple, simple enough, right? We sell a service that sells houses. You know, the thing that's really interesting about the real estate business is we think we have to have a different marketing plan, but honestly, most of us are selling the same house over and over again. We're, it's just got a different address, right? You know, the problem why a lot of us can't do more business is we think we have to have a special plan for each listing we take. We think we have to have a special thing. We watch million dollar listing and we buy into it. <laughs> we buy into it. We need to gotta have a video with a helicopter in it for this house, right? And guys, most of the business we're doing are average around the median sales price in your market. You know, some of us are doing some luxury things and good for you guys, but most of us are doing just regular, regular traditional real estate brokerage sales. Nothing real fancy, you know? Um, so I had this idea several years ago and I kind of come up with it with a coach. I'm not going to lie to you and tell you I come up with it by myself, but I had this idea that, you know, what if we were like, what if we were like McDonald's, right? You go to the drive through at McDonald's and yeah, yeah, they'll put a little extra ketchup on that cheeseburger for you. They'll take the cheese off for you, but still the same cheeseburger, right? They'll hold the pickles, but still the same cheeseburger. So McDonald's isn't going to change their hamburger patty for you. They're not going to put a different bun on the on it for you. They got the bun. They're not going to put a different kind of cheese. You can't get pepper jack on your cheeseburger, right? You know, why can't we do the same thing with houses? Why can't we have the same sign in front? Some agents feel like they need a special sign for a special house. Um, why can't we do that? Right? We don't sell houses, guys. We sell a service that sells houses. And when you start thinking that way, we start thinking that way, your business is going to change. Hey, thanks, Michelle. Michelle's got well, just got her pre-listing package together. Norma, don't have a pre-listing package. Norma, I, I guarantee you, if you build your pre-listing package and you start sending it to every agent, or not every agent, I'm sorry, every seller that has a house for sale, I guarantee you that you will get more listings, right? That's your brochure. That's your service. You know, why do you need one? Number one, the reason you need one is most agents don't have one. Over the years, I've listed a ton of property and we all hear this. They say, oh, well, I've got an, I've got an agent already. I've got an agent I'm meeting with. And a lot of us go, oh, they already got an agent. Uh, you know, what'd I do? What'd I do? Right? My response to that has always has been, oh, well, that's fantastic. I think that every seller should interview multiple agents. I tell you what, I'd like to email you over my marketing plan. It tells about me and my team and what we do to sell real estate. What I'd like for you to do is go ahead and request theirs too. That way you can sit them side by side and you can compare and you know, see who has the best plan, right? The reason why I do that is because I know 9.9 .9 out of 10 agents probably don't have one. And I know that when I call back and I follow up the next day, I follow up before my appointment and I go, hey, Mr. And Mrs. Seller, hey, Jason Morris here. I just want to give you a call, see if you have any questions about the marketing plan I sent over, over to you. Their response is usually they looked over it, right? 
or that maybe they have a question. Maybe they have a question or two, but I want to make sure they got it, make sure they looked at it. More importantly, I want to make sure they ask the other agent for theirs, right? So what typically happens is they ask the other agent for theirs and the other agent goes, oh, well, I don't have one. Or they type up something real quick in an email and send it over, right? But they don't have one. They don't have one that's detailed. They don't have one that's um, really extensive. And, and that's number one though. Daryl just said I had a seller call me last week that I met in person last year, still had his pre-listing package and was calling him in the spring. If you wouldn't have had a pre-listing package, he wouldn't have called you, Daryl. I promise you. But number two, it builds confidence. You know what you're going to say. And I should have put this on here, but not only does it build confidence, it puts your marketing plan in writing, but it helps you to build a financially feasible marketing plan. Right? If you don't do it, you don't put it in there. And here's the thing, guys. Here's the thing. Just being real estate agents and just putting the property on MLS, as long as your office syndicates, an amazing amount of stuff happens that's automated. Did you guys know that? An amazing amount of stuff happens that's automated. A lot of us are building plans that aren't financially feasible. I'm guilty of that too. When I first started real estate, I went to a, I went to a big um, real estate convention and I saw the talking house. I know this was like 15 years ago. Talking house was this little device you put on a stick that looked like a little house and buyers could pull up their car real close to it and tune into an AM radio station and they could hear my voice tell them a detailed description of the house. The problem was those things were about 250 bucks a piece and I was literally right out of college and I was broke, like broke, broke. I worked full time, sold real estate and all of my money went to bills. I had no money to spend on real estate stuff. Well, what happened was I went and charged four of those things up on my credit card. How many of you guys have ever done that? Charged four of those things up on my credit card and what it did was it, it actually did not help me at all. I don't think I sold one house from using the talking house, but it limited me because I like to promise everybody talking house. I thought that was um, a great thing to do. It limited me in that I only had four talking houses. I just spent a thousand bucks on these things. So te technically I could only take four listings. You know, I see agents doing this with signs. They buy a sign that's 400 bucks. I, I talked to an agent not long ago that bought five signs and paid $1,600 for them. And he thought these signs were the greatest thing ever. But guys, the thing I see that's the biggest thing right now in our industry is drone footage. I've seen agents paying two, 300 bucks for drone footage for somebody to come out and do it. And guys, I've never had a buyer say, hey, Jason, I really like that house at 123 Main Street, but you don't have any pictures of the roof. Guys, I guarantee you, none of you have had a buyer say that. Hey, Greg, like to go look at that house over on uh, 123 Maple, but uh, man, they don't have any pictures of the roof. Can't see the roof, so it must be, must be a problem, Jason. Can't see the roof. We don't even hear that, right? But having your plan in writing allows you to make sure your plan's financially feasible. I talked to a girl a while back that she had a plan that includes staging and cleaning and all this stuff, and she was spending $1,100 on a house as soon as she took the listing. Now, the thing is, if you're working in a, uh, an expensive market and things are flying off the shelf, $1,100 a listing, and the thing selling in two days and multiple offers, hey, you're making some money. You can cash flow that situation. However, once the market turns, and for a lot of us just starting out, Man, next thing you know, you get 10 listings, you got $11,000 tied up in stuff that there's no guarantee on you making money. And here's the thing, guys, you can pay for all the staging and all the cleaning you want to pay for, but if they live like pigs the day you listed the house, the house is going to look like pigs live there a week after you have it cleaned. I guarantee you, right? But your pre-listing package is a brochure. It's about the service you are off you're offered. It's what you offer. And number five, pre-listing package just works. So guys, number four, and I, I uh, promised you guys I would keep this to an hour, so I um, took up a lot of my time here already. So if you guys have questions, go ahead and ask them. 
just put them in the comments. I'll be glad to answer, answer them as we go. But number four, I'm a big believer in scripts, big believer in scripts. I hear a lot of agents tell me, they say, oh, well, I don't like to use a script. And um, I've done some role playing and stuff in, in my group coaching and um, over the years. And some, sometimes I'd get on these calls with the agents that wasn't using a script. And man, they would talk about stuff. They, it's like they were trying to talk me out of selling the house, you know, but scripts do a lot for you. I mean, number one, they, you know what to say, you know what to say. It's number one. Number two, a script keeps you on track, right? You're not having conversations that are not pertinent to them selling their house. You know, a lot of agents don't wonder why they get hung up on while well, they're calling people and they just ramble on. It's like they think they're going to wear them down on the phone and they'll take, take a, um, they'll give them the listing. Guys, you know, when you're calling sellers, I'm, I'm going to give you this, write this one down, write this one down. If you talk about what the sellers want to talk about, then they don't hang up on you. Okay. And I'm not, telling you to talk about how the Clemson LSU game went last week. You know, I'm in South Carolina, Clemson. That's a big deal for us here. Even though Clemson didn't win, they got there. Um, but that's not what a for sale owner wants to talk about. That's not what expired wants to talk about. What they want to talk about selling their house. They want to talk about what was in the ad. So Alvin asked, I guess it depends on how many hand raising sellers there are, but what's your process of dropping off pre-listing package? Drive to each address and leave it in the mailbox? No, I don't, you should not leave mail in somebody's mailbox. Don't do that. Uh, I prefer to have it in a PDF format and email it. If they don't have email and you have some time, you can throw it in the mail, put it in a big brown envelope. The big ones, don't fold it up and make it crazy. Put it in a big brown envelope. Cost eighty to mail it. And, um, and that's an 11 page listing, listing package and drop it in the mail. And the reason you put it in one of those big envelopes rather than try to crunch it up and fold it up and put it in a little tiny envelope. The reason you do that is because you want to make sure they see it. All of us get real excited when we get a big envelope in the mail guarantees they open it. Right. But your script, your script, having a script keeps you on track. It keeps the conversation moving forward and it's professional. Yep, Ben, Ben, script keeps your conversation going, right? And guys, one of the things about a script is when you ask that same question 50 times, when you ask it 100 times, when you ask it 1,000 times, and you're using the same script and you're asking the same questions, all of a sudden, it's going to become like you got psychic powers. You're going to be able to anticipate the answers. You're going to be able to anticipate the objections. You're going to be able to overcome objections before you get the objection. I guarantee you. <clears throat> it's like, I don't know, any of you guys ever waited tables? Uh, any guys ever waited tables? So I've never waited tables, but I ate at a lot of restaurants. And one of the things the waiter or waitress always does at the end of the meal is they come over and they say, they say hey, Ben, hey, Ben, would you like dessert? And I guarantee you, after they've done that, after they've done that to 50 people eating at the restaurant, 100 people, 500 people, I bet they can, they can just about tell if they're going to order dessert by their body language when they ask the question. You just know. I used to work at Sears. I used to work at Sears when I was in college. And um, one of the questions that, that they had you ask is when people, we were checking people out, they'd say, hey, would you like to put it on your Sears card? I promise you, I could look the person in the eyes when we're at the checkout, and I could just about tell you whether or not they had a, they had a Sears card before I asked the question. I just knew it. I mean, it just all the signs were there. I noticed all, I started noticing all the little nuances, all the eye contact. Honestly, some of the people, the demeanor about them. I, I, you could almost stereotype them and say, this person has a Sears card, this person doesn't, you know? Um, it was really crazy, but this is the same way. You almost develop psychic powers when you're asking those same questions over and over again. 
you know. And guys, you need to use a script that's really, really simple. Really simple, really straightforward, really direct to the point. I do see a lot of scripts out there that, you know, they're three pages long. They ask a lot of questions that are completely irrelevant. Where they're moving to isn't relevant on the initial conversation. You know, some of these scripts have questions in them that are just about as crazy as, hey, hey, do you have a cat? And are you going to take the cat with you when you move? They're almost that crazy. Right? My scripts I teach in my coaching, they're real simple. They're straightforward. They're to the point. Right? They've been developed by me over 18 years of selling real estate. So that, that's what I teach. All the stuff I teach is based off of um, the real estate business I've had over 18 years, which includes being an individual agent focusing solely on listings and even um, having a large team and doing uh, over 400 transactions between sales and leases. So um, that's the experience I'm pulling from. But um, guys, number five, number five, and number five could be the most important part of this that you listen to could be the most important part of this if you've if you haven't been paying attention to the rest of it you've just been listening to me talk because I hear that I have a nice voice <laughs> uh, but uh, then you want to make sure you get your pen and your paper out you want to make sure if you're listening to it this on Facebook make sure you screenshot um, some of these next slides because I think they're that important I think having a follow-up plan having a written follow-up plan what you're gonna do is one of the most important things you can have, right? What are you gonna do with the lead? How are you gonna follow up with them? Even if it's just a preliminary plan, right? I, I, got, this, I got this slide, I got it from Grant Cardone, right? Everybody knows who Grant Cardone is, and uh, you know, I feel like we can all agree that Grant's, you know, when it comes to sales, Grant's a pretty reliable source for information, for the most part. He's about as reliable as they come anyway. Um, now, I looked around trying to find the original, the original person for this, um, for this meme and this slide. And, uh, there's a bunch of them out there, and I couldn't figure out who it was, so we're just going to give Grant Carnell the credit um, for the purpose of the, today's call. But, guys, these things are based off of, off of sales, the sales industry as a whole. It says 48% of salespeople never follow up. I believe the percentage is higher in the real estate agent. I believe there are so many agents out there that are making that first call to expires and then they never call again. They never call that expired again. The expire said, Hey, Hey, I don't like real estate agents. Hey, I'll call you back later. Hey, we're not ready to list. Hey, we're going to take our house off the market. Hey, we're going to wait a little bit while, Hey, bring a buyer. I'll pay you 3%. Right. Oh, I don't want to pay a sales commission, right? 48% of salespeople never follow up. It's probably higher in the real estate business. Only 25% of salespeople make a second contact. A lot of you are making that first call and not even leaving a voicemail and saying, oh, they didn't pick up. They didn't pick up. I'm not going to call back. A lot of you guys are having a great conversation and then you call them three weeks later and they listed their house with somebody else, right? How many of you guys have had that happen? Have you ever had that happen? Yes, yes in the comments. Um, called somebody, had a great conversation, they promised you the listing, um, just call them back in two weeks and they'd be ready, and you got ready to call them back and you realized it had been week, listed a week ago. How many of you guys, have, have you ever had that happen? Give me a yes in the comments on Facebook. Um, Listen to the recording. Give me a yes. Got some yeses already. Michelle, Laura, Michael, Michelle. Got a couple of Michelles in here. Susan. Yep. Happens all the time. Got Derek. It hurts, man. It does. You know, hey, you thought you guys were friends, right? Now, the truth is, sometimes I didn't call you back for a lot of different reasons. Sometimes, hey, sometimes it's just, damn, they had a 15-minute phone conversation with you, and they didn't remember your name, Blaine. Blaine Washington. They didn't remember who Blaine Washington was. Or maybe they remember who Blaine Washington was, but they couldn't figure out your phone number, right? Or they just got busy. Guys, I get busy sometimes, man. And it isn't that I didn't want to talk to somebody, but I just, I just got busy and I forgot to call them back. And then like three days later, when I do have time, I forgot about, I couldn't find the person's phone number. 
right? 12% of people make three contacts and stop. Now, I'm not going to read this whole thing to you. I want to get to the point. Go down to the bottom. 80% of sales are made on the fifth to 12th contact. How many of you guys, well, let me ask this a different question because I don't think I'll get any answers. I was going to say, how many of you guys are following up with an expired 12 times? Um, but do you have a contact plan that includes at least 12 follow-ups, yes or no? You know, I, I guarantee you most, the only people that are are going to be the people that are probably in my group coaching, right? 80% of sales are made the fifth to 12th contact. So if you're not calling, if you're calling one time and hanging up, you're not going to, you know, and then you're not getting him. Michael Dick, he's got one because of my advice. How's it working out for you, Mike? Michael, how's a, how's a 12 contact follow-up plan working out for you? working out great how many listings have you taken this year so far and guys this guy's name's michael dick how many listings have you taken this year he's already taken three guys some of you guys if you took three this year that'd be more than you took in 2019 the average agent only sells four houses and mike has taken three listings in the first two weeks of 2020 michael is going to be a superstar in 2020, he's going to be the top agent in his office if he just remains consistent, right? Honestly, he finishes the last half of the month like he's done the first half. You'll probably be listing agent of the month in your office. Let's just be honest. And it doesn't matter how big your office is. You could probably still be listing agent of the month with no problems if you just replicate it. You're probably already in the running. So, um, but guys, how would you guys like to do that? Would you... How many of you would have liked to have already taken three listings this year? Your follow-up plan is what makes that possible. Making those initial calls, picking out the ones that are good, right? Sifting through, cherry picking the ones that are good, the ones that want to do something, and then follow up with them. You're not going to get 100%. But, but we work in an industry that's so insane. If we could get 1% or 2% of the expires that are happening in our market, we'd probably make a really good living. We got four or 5% of the expireds and for sale owners we've seen. We'd have so much business, we couldn't do it all, right? So 80%. So guys, I want to give you guys, I want to tie all this stuff together before we, we get off the call today. So what do we do? How do we do this? How do we tie it all together? How do we have a great follow-up plan? How do we make calls? So what we got to do is we got to got to look at that. Um, we got the funnel, right? We're making our calls. We have a good call. We have a good call. You're following my scripts. And part of my script is even if you don't get the listing, you still say, hey, I'd like to send you over some information about me and my team. Hey, I know, I know you're not ready to list your house yet. I know you don't want to work with a real estate agent, but I'd like to send you some information over about me and my team and, a, and our plan to sell houses, what we do to sell houses, right? You tell them that. What's your email address? You ask it. You need to be smooth, right? Hey, I'd like to send you over some information about me and my team and what we do to sell houses. What's your email address, right? There's a great chance, probably like 75, 80, 90% of the time, they're going to give you their email address, right? So you just had a good call, but they're not ready. You immediately, as soon as you hang up the call with them, you shoot over their pre-listing package. Shoot over your pre-listing package. Um, then you send them a text. You send them a text and just say, hey, hey, Amanda, hey, I just want to make sure that you got my, want to make sure you got my email. And they go, oh, yeah, we got it. Hey, fantastic. Then, so that right there is already three contacts. You've had a good call with them. You send them over your pre-listing package. They got it. They've seen your email. Send them a text. They've confirmed they've got it, right? Call the next day and you go, hey, Amanda, hey, this is Jason Morris. I just want to give you a quick call. You know, I sent you over some information about me and my team and what we um, do to sell houses. I just want to follow up with you. And, and uh, I know you got it, but I want to see if you had any questions. Yeah, I'll say yes, no, maybe, who knows, whatever. I like the color of your logo, whatever they say. Doesn't really matter at this point because what we're doing is we're making sure 
we're making sure they know who Amanda Carver is. We're making sure they know who Missy Bills is. Making sure they know who Tanya Upton is, right? I want to make sure they know who Jason Morris is, right? So by that time, even if we're leaving a voicemail saying, hey, and I'm a big believer in voicemails. If you don't leave me a voicemail, I will not call you back unless I know you and I have your number saved and you're my friend, right? And guys, sometimes we got to remember this. Sometimes people don't answer our call because they're busy. I'll tell you this. I, I was looking at my phone because I got the Facebook Facebook Live pulled up on my phone so I could see comments and stuff on it. Since we've been on this call, I've had four calls, right? I've had four calls. It isn't that I don't want to talk to him. One, of, one guy's a really great friend of mine. I like talking to him. He's always got stuff going on. It's exciting to talk to him. I want to talk to him. I can't, though because I'm doing something else, right? Sometimes they can't answer your phone because they're doing something else. And um, so, you know, then the next day, day or two later, so you call, make sure they got your listing plan. Day or two later, you call them back up and say, hey, Amanda, Jason Morris here. Just want to give you a quick call. You know, we talked the other day. I know you were talking about selling your house. Well, I was doing some research for buyers. And I share all these scripts in my group coaching, but I'm doing some research for buyers, but, um, and right around there, right around your house. And I wanted to tell you what I found. I want to tell you what I found out. And all you're really doing is you're typing in their address, one, two, three main street or whatever it is, or the community they live in, whatever information you got from that call. And you're just doing a quick search, quick search in MLS. You're not doing anything real detailed, but you're basically making a call to them that says, Hey, Hey, Angie, I was thinking about you. I, um, I was doing some research right around yours. I found some things that are interesting. I know you want $150,000 for your house. And if we put your house on the market today, if your house went on MLS today at $150,000, I always like to find something unique about their house, right? Your house would be the cheapest one. On, your house would be the best price one on the pond. Your house would be the best one best price for the backs up to the woods. Your house would be the only four bedroom available in the neighborhood. Right? I like to find something a little bit unique that make their house stand out. You know, that unique selling, unique selling proposition. There's always one, you know, guys in a lot of those communities that were built during the real estate boom in 2005, 2006, 2007, we forget a lot of those houses are 13, 14, 15 years old now, 16 years old. And if you're living in a coastal area like I am, Guess what happens? We got a lot of salt in the air. It has a little more wear and tear on a roof. Has a little more wear and tear on an air conditioner, right? So if their house, if they've replaced the roof on one of those houses built in 2005, that's a great selling feature. They replaced the hot water heater. That's a great selling feature. I mean, hot water heater is not that expensive, but they replaced the HVAC. That's a great selling feature, right? Some of these people have updated these homes back in 2005. You know, you're you were lucky if you got carpet, I believe they were selling them so fast. And some of these people have tore up that old carpet and put down hardwoods and granite countertops and stuff like that. And they've turned these 15 year old houses into something amazing with some minor upgrades that really stand out and are really great selling features. Right. But we want to call them about some research. Then my favorite line to say is even if they say, Oh, well, I'm busy right now. Say, Hey, no problem, Robert. I'll tell you what, I'll email it over to you real quick. Is that cool? Fantastic. So you, then you send them an email over. Then you follow up the next day about the email you sent over, right? Sometimes, guys, we have to we have to create reasons to follow up. We do that. Maybe we create a net sheet next week. Maybe we call them about something that just went pending, just got listed, just actually went sold, right? We call them and we talk to them about stuff they want to talk about. That's the important thing. And then every time we follow up, we have to show a little bit of value, something they're interested in. Ben said this is where he struggles. I always have a hard time remembering to have some value reason to call. I just find in, call them, and get tongue-tied. Yeah, man, this is what, and Ben, that's why we got to have, we got to have a written marketing plan. Got to have a written follow-up plan, right? If we write it down, we write down some framework. Write down four, five, six ideas, man. Go back to my group coaching. Listen to the follow-up call I did in December. I gave you about, about 15 things to follow up with there. And 
go back, listen to that call, make some notes and just pick one off the list. Hey, but sometimes we got to get creative with our follow-up and we got to offer something of value to follow up, right? And guys, if we just follow this, just what's on the slide, screenshot the slide if you can. And we just keep following up. We follow up the next week about a house that just went pending, pending, sold, whatever. Um, we follow up about another house, right? I mean, but just these seven, just the seven, number eight, just keep following up. Just the seven, just those seven touches, guys, that puts us in the 80% range right there. So does this make sense to you guys? Yes or no? Tell me, tell me on Facebook, even if you're listening to the recording, yes or no, this makes sense or this doesn't make sense, right? By the time you get to that seventh call, they're going to know who Blaine Washburn is, right? And two, you want to make sure those initial calls that you don't have a big gap in, in between. You want to make sure they don't have a big gap in between. And, um, but make sure they don't have a big gap in between. And one of the reasons why you don't want a big gap in between is because the longer those initial follow-ups are apart, the more likely it is another agent is going to get in the middle of your conversation with these, with these sellers. You need to claim them. You just need to go ahead and build them on and said, Hey, Karen Kali is my client, right? And Karen, you're not going to get, Karen said that she's, um, a lot of expired numbers aren't correct. Um, that is correct. It's mind data. It's mind data. It's people actually, Red X has an algorithm that goes out there. I'll tell you that the Red X that I recommend is Red X. It's the um, Onyx version. Now uh, with Onyx, they give you all the data they can find for an address. And your job is just to sift through the data. We don't worry about the ones that aren't right. We worry about the ones that are right. A lot of agents get hung up. Let's say if it's taken them 20 conversations to set an appointment, they get hung up on those 19 conversations that didn't want didn't want what you had to offer today. We need to be concerned about that 20th, that one out of 20 that is right and the one that does want to work with us today. That's what we have to do. It's just, you know, there's no way to get that. Ronaldo said, yes, you're right. I put myself like I'm a pest or bugging them when I feel they don't want to, they don't want to carry on with a conversation. Uh, and Ronaldo, the, the thing is we get, we get hung up on a lot of stuff, man. Um, as real estate agents, you know, typically most of us are high D's and high I's. And if you're a high I on the disc test, um, Susan says she's over a call reluctance. Fantastic. But we get hung up on, on this, especially if we're high I's. We, we're social. Typically, most real estate agents were social people. And so we kind of get our feelings hurt a little bit when they don't have time to talk to us. But one of the things that we have to remember, and this is listing appointments included, is these people aren't really our friends. I know that that's something that's not tough to, sounds harsh. These people aren't our friends. We're calling these people for two reasons. Number one, they got a house that they want to sell. And number two, we sell houses. Guys, I learned this the hard way, man, because, um, Sometimes, uh, sometimes, especially if I'm all wound up and I'm all jacked up on caffeine and stuff, I can ramble on as long as I think somebody wants to listen to me. And, um, but one of the problems that we have as real estate agents is we'll get on the phone with somebody and the conversation gets sidetracked. It gets away from selling their house. Guys, the only reason they're talking to you is the same reason you're calling. They have a house to sell and you're telling them something and they think maybe you can sell it. That's the only reason they're having a conversation with you. Okay. It's the only reason they're having a conversation with you. And um, the only reason you're calling is because they have a house to sell and that's our job. That's our job. We don't like to talk about the real estate business. We like to talk about how we're independent contractors, but you know what? You can be an independent contractor as long as you want, but if you don't do your job and sell a house, you don't make any money. Right. I mean, just simple, simple truth. Get off. <laughs> I seen a great quote the other day, get off your high horse and do the work that it takes to build your business. And a lot of us need to do that, but we just have to do it. Right. I remember I used to go on listing appointments. 
I'd go on listing appointments. And I was setting 10 appointments a week and it was exhausting. It was exhausting. This was when I was a brand new agent. I'd go to the people's house and I would sit there all day and I'd talk about the Clemson Tigers and Carolina Gamecocks and, you know, Connor McGregor's fighting this weekend. He's fighting Cowboy Sharon. And we would talk about that stuff for two hours. I, I'd leave their house going, man, these people love me. They invited me to dinner. And what I didn't realize at the time was um, the reason they invited me to dinner was because they didn't think that I was going to leave. <laughs> and, you know, generally people are pretty nice when you're sitting there in front of them. It doesn't matter what area of the country you're in. Typically, you know, very few people are going to say, hey, Chad, time's up. Got to leave, buddy. Very few people are going to do that. Most people are going to genuinely be nice people. Doesn't matter what part of the country you're in or where they're from. They're going to be pretty hospitable. They're going to offer you something to drink. They're going to offer you a glass of water, right? Whatever it is, a cup of coffee. And, um, and you have to remember, though, you have to stay on track, just like the doctor's office. You're going to the doctor because you have a sore throat. You know, it's not a social call. The doctor isn't spending an hour in there with you. The doctor's been in 10 minutes, 10 minutes. He's figuring out your problem. He's prescribing you something and he's going to the next person, right? You might be friends with a doctor. You might know him, but the only reason you're there is because you have a sore throat and you think he can fix your sore throat. And the only reason he's there is because he fixes sore throats and he gets paid to fix them. If your friends do a social call outside of the doctor's office, right? That's what we have. So guys, guys, I've wrote a couple of books. Um, they're available on Amazon, how to be an expired master. I go through a whole expired, a whole expired system. Uh, you get the hard copy for 15 bucks on Amazon. You get the, the, I encourage you to buy the hard copy because you can, um, you can actually make notes and stuff in it, or you get the Kindle version for nine bucks. And then I have how to be an objection master. Also how to, have how to be a for sale by owner master too. Um, those are available on Amazon. Uh, if you've already bought one, please leave me a five star review. It's a great book. I don't think there's anything like this. Both all of my books are pretty short reads um, to be able to read it less than two hours. And guys, um, do you guys? I tell you what, I got about ten minutes here. Do you guys have any questions? Any questions? So guys, I appreciate you guys being on the call today. I think this is a great call. I love talking about expireds. Guys, you can build a massive business around expireds and for sale by owners. Hey, thanks, Karen. I hope that helped you with some of the issues you got with expireds. Hey, are you having, uh, yes, you have a coaching call. Um, are you having the, Eating at 10 now. What about Sundays? Um, yeah, we're having a coaching call tomorrow at 11 a.m., Michael. Um, Sundays, you know what? Sundays are great days to make calls. I'll tell you what, a lot of people are home on Sundays. Um, it's a great day to make calls. Uh, yeah, Re Aline Reddix actually has my, my scripts. Um, they'll practice with you. The script, uh, I have some uh, inspired scripts that are in the book. Hey, thanks, Derek. Um, Ronaldo, where are the books available for your coaching students as a download? Actually, guys, if you're in my coaching, the PDF versions are available in the group coaching on the group coaching website. Um, William asked, main difference between pre-listing package versus listing package. Honestly, same thing. Same thing. I just create one. I think with the general public, with the general public, I would not use the term listing. Um, I would not use the term listing. Uh, I call it a marketing package or pre-appointment package, right? Uh, guys, if you cut out the word listing in your vocabulary with a lot of the conversations you're having, you'll notice I don't use the word listing in any of my scripts. Hey guys, all my scripts are available on my coaching website um, for group coaching members. Eileen, do they have a pre-listing package or is it in the book? Actually, um, you go to jasonmorrisprelistingpackage.com, jasonmorrisprelistingpackage.com. You can download the template. Um, the template, we're going to be going over pre-listing package in my group coaching. If you're not in my group coaching and you want to be, send me a message through Facebook and I will give you a great deal on the first month. Let's see. Um, 
what time and days are the meetings? Uh, my group coaching is every Thursday at 11 a.m. It is month to month. You can cancel any time. Um, I'm not tying you into a 12 month contract or something crazy like that, but I guarantee if you do what I talk about in my group coaching, you will make money. It will have an impact, a positive impact on your business. Uh, what would your follow up look like for people who referred to you by the buyers following a recent closing? I just have their name and number. Uh, Richard, I would do the exact same thing here. I'd call them up. Um, buyers are a little bit different, but you want to stay in contact with them. And um, you want to stay in contact with them and you want to talk to them very regularly. A lot of agents are, think they're supposed to put people on drips. And I got some news for you. Drips, drips don't work in 2020. Google's too smart. Google knows, Google knows that that's a spam email that you sent out to 100 people. And if you're using this, the email drip system that is in the service you're, you're subscribing to, it's even worse. If it's being used by 100 agents, those emails have already went out to a couple thousand people at a minimum. And um, chances are Google's already marked those emails as spam. So, you know, they're never going to get to anywhere they're supposed to go. Google is smart, smart today, guys. They're smart. Did you know, I'll, I'll give you guys this as a bonus here. Did you know that Google has actually marked images as spam and they're smart, their email is smart enough to know that if you have that image in your footer, that that email is possibly spam. So some of you guys with your company logo in your email, you might be going to spam because of your company logo, right? Especially if you're at a big franchise or even a franchise with a couple thousand agents, right? So how often when I call a buyer, I'd call them as needed, but um, I try to have that initial conversation with them, gauge their motivation, see when they, um, see when, where, what, how, you know, all the important questions, when they want to buy, how do they want to, how are they planning on buying it? Where do they want to be at? And then I would follow up based on that. If you're going to set them up on an automatic um, email or e-alert, one of the things I do was I'd make sure you're following up as they're getting emails. And a lot of, if you're using a CRM, if you're using like conversion or Boomtown or something like that, you can basically log in the back and see who got emails today and see who you need to follow up with is logged in and actually click the email. That's, I mean, that's a fantastic tool and that's a fantastic way to actually call people and go, hey, hey, Richard, this is Jason Morris. I sent you an email earlier today. Um, most of these people don't know that it's automated, but hey, I sent you an email earlier today. I just want to give you a call and see if you, uh, see if you liked anything that got sent out. Uh, George asked, how do you feel about an employee making calls for you? I don't, I don't like it. And I'll tell you why. Uh, I'm not an advocate for having a VA or an ISA make calls for you. Uh, number one, in a lot of states, it's illegal if they're not licensed number one but number two is is a lot of agents don't have a system they've actually performed enough to be able to create a system with that employee or with an ISA that works seamlessly and to another problem is is like like me, me and you George we've talked a bunch of times you're a super nice guy but let's say that somebody's calling for you and they're a super nice person they're calling, they're having great conversations, great follow-up and all that stuff, but you don't really have a system to bridge that gap between you and them. So then all of a sudden you show up to the house and it isn't because you're a bad person, you're a nice person, but they don't know you. They know Marianne that's been making the calls or they know John Smith that's been making the calls, right? Um, it's hard to bridge that gap. It's really hard to bridge that gap um, between, between um, those. And a lot of agents, I've seen very few agents that do it successfully. So Elena asked, what do I think about door knocking expires? Um, I don't like that either. And the reason I don't is because um, we can get on, I'm not saying you don't do it. It is a strategy that works for a lot of people. However, I don't like it. And the reason why I don't like it is because you may have uh, one expired on the east side of town, one expired on the west side of town. It might take you 20, 30 minutes to get through between expires where in that 20, 30 minutes on the phone with a dollar, you could have call, called 30 people, 40 people. You could have dialed 30, 40 numbers, right? And um, talk to five people in the time that you're going to knock on two doors that may or not, may not even be home, you know? Um, and um, 
Yeah, so I'm not I'm not a fan of door knocking. Uh, I know there's a lot of agents that do well door knocking a community. Um, number one, I have a lot of uh, I'll tell you the truth. 18 years, 17, 18 years in the real estate business. Um, I have a lot of safety concerns nowadays that I didn't. Maybe it's me just getting older. Um, but I feel like we see in the news all the time an agent getting getting you know having something bad happen to them. You know. Um, I feel like we see that all the time. I think it's a safety concern. If you're going to door knock, have somebody with you or make sure somebody knows where you're at for sure. Um, but I think it's a safety concern, number one. And I think number two, I think um, even if you're door knocking the whole neighborhood, you're not doing targeted door knocks. You're not really contacting people that want to sell their house. So yeah, you might get one or two every now and then they're thinking about it that you get them before they do anything. But at the same time, if we, there's so many warm leads out there. There's so many people that have problems. And if we look for people that have problems, we can find people that want to sell their houses. So I believe there's enough low hanging fruit, even in some of these tough markets that you can, you can make a very effective impact. You can make a bigger impact by targeting your focus. We only have a certain amount of time. We only have a certain amount of money that we can spend on marketing efforts. And I think that needs to be as focused as possible. So that's one of the reasons I'm just not a big fan of door knocking. So, um, so guys, um, I, Hey, I appreciate you guys being on the call today. If you're, if you're thinking that you need a coach, you want to talk to me about, um, about helping you build your listing systems, uh, send me a message through Facebook, more than happy to help you and more than happy to give you an amazing deal in the first month. I want to build value for you and make sure that you're successful. So guys, you guys have a great day and I will talk to you guys soon.